Hi, Jack here with a bit of a kind of warning before this episode. So the first half of this is a spoiler filled review for Doctor Strange. We already have a review up on the channel, but this is like a full discussion between me, Harrison and Ben. However, uh, Ben's recording did not work. And so what you're really listening to is like half of a conversation that's been edited so that it's somewhat coherent. It fails at times to be coherent just because things aren't mentioned or stuff isn't segued into properly and so there'll be occasional uh, sound effects that I've put into to kind of signify when the cuts are but hopefully it's not too confusing hopefully you get the gist of what we're saying with some of it and then the second half is just a trailer breakdown like we did in the last episode because that was quite fun. Yeah we've been on a bit of a hiatus but hopefully you're doing some more soon and yeah hope you enjoy the episode. I just clapped. That won't help you. Because uh, you won't have heard it. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, welcome back to another uh, Real Opinions podcast. We haven't done one for like, what, three weeks now, probably. It feels like a very long time since we've done a last one. Yeah, we don't have too much of a structure for this one. But, um, we can review Der Strangy. Der Strangy, yeah. <laughs> so, shall we, I'll, shall we just reiterate that this is... we've There's a review on the channel... But the, we've all seen it now, so we can kind of just do a kind of review uh, post spoilers discussion. Yeah. Post spoilers. That's, discussion. that's what they're called. I already said what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it in the review. So what did you guys think? It's fine. Well, I I told you because you got mad at me, but I liked Ant Man more, and then you reacted like I said. Yeah, that's weird. It's like you, you, I found you, that you weird. You reacted like I said that I like Batman and Robin more. It's I just thought Ant Man was more fun. This was kind of dull, for the most part, apart from the bits where it wasn't, which I know is a very pointless thing. So it was boring, apart from when it wasn't <laughs> boring. But like the 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 effect sequences, <laughs> the 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 effect sequences were very good. Everything else was very average. And I think that Mads Mikkelsen might have actually graduated into being my least favorite Marvel villain now. Not necessarily because he's the worst, but just because. By now, I expect that they should be trying harder with the villains. Like they know people complain about it every time. It's not like it's because he is just the worst. It's because it's yeah, it's so like, long they've been it, crap. Yeah, it's like by now, I really expect that they 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 know that it's the one problem that people keep having, yeah. and they don't care. They don't care because they're just going to get rid of him at the end of this film, and he's not going to contribute to the wider universe. That's the thing. So what's is the that point yeah. in trying? There's a bit in this film where Mads Mikkelsen says, even Strange has abandoned you. And I thought, what do you mean, even Strange? You don't know who he is. <laughs> what do you mean, even him? You have, you have no idea. Like, you didn't, You don't think he's that great. <laughs> that is true, yeah. They did really jump into the fact that... For me, it was the fact that, like, he was... Up until a point, he was so bad with his powers, and then all of a sudden he can beat, like, the, the top-tier villain with his two henchmen that <laughs> yeah. are killing everyone. I think there's a mid ground though. Like he could have, he could have become good, but without having to, without being the best. Like, which is what he becomes by the end. Yeah, but that's the thing. I, th- I, I kind of liked that he was a cocky like asshole that was brilliant at other things, brilliant at thinking, but he wasn't brilliant at his powers at first. Mm. And then the idea that they just kind of jumped instantly to mm. no, actually he's he's amazing because montage. It didn't bother me that much, but I think you're right. I just didn't care about that side of things as much it's, it's fine I know, it, it wasn't like a thing where i was like angry that he was good i was just kind of like it felt almost like a bit of a missed opportunity mm. and a bit just easy which is what how i felt with a lot of the stuff in the yeah film. just it must have been just during some point a winter soldier because you know they have that computer where it says like it calculates all the threats it's his name pops up which, why would his name yeah, pop up if he's just a Doctor surgeon? Strange, don't like, they? Yeah. Isn't, and he hasn't shown yeah. any hero qualities or anything like that at that yeah. point. So, But isn't there that thing where someone's calling him, though, and he says something about uh, a guy who's in experimental armour, who's, like, crippled? And I thought that was talking about War Machine after Civil War. I don't remember hearing that line Isn't at it? all. Well, he gets, a, he, gets, he, gets, he gets a... When he's driving the car, just before the car crash, he gets a call about... Treating someone who's in an experimental oh, suit of armor. I didn't connect that at all. Like a problem with his back or something. And I thought, I well, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I feel like that would be. Maybe something. it's someone else. I don't know. I just thought it was civil war. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I also didn't like the humor very much. There's a couple of jokes that were fine, but very forced at times. That like particularly Beyonce joke was bad. 
that that felt to me like something from like uh like one of the you know like the disaster movie meet the spartans things where like they go up to like some kind of lord of the rings character and go beyonce and he'd be like who's beyonce and then later yeah. you'd see gandalf sat at a table listening that's to true. beyonce yeah. like yeah. enjoying it and like, ah, did... that's funny <laughs> and i don't know just because like i said to you harrison they kind of brought me out of the film just because for a second it just kind of felt like so beyonce exists in the M- mcu is that a thing <laughs> Is she, yeah, she's technically a character in the Marvel universe now because the song's been acknowledged. <laughs> and oh, the other bit that I um, the other part where the humor particularly annoyed me. I was talking to Jack about this as well. Is at the very end, uh, Strange basically sends Mads Mikkelsen and the other guy to an eternal <laughs> hell dimension where they will be tortured forever and then he makes a quip about you should have checked the last page of the book and that annoyed me because only like half an hour earlier he was getting upset about the fact that he killed someone and he was a doctor and he shouldn't be taking lives but he's absolutely fine sending someone to be <laughs> tortured for all eternity in a nether world of hell and, that, and like still going like you shouldn't they put the warnings after the spell yeah <laughs> You just remind me of a bit that I had a bit of problem with as well, where, you know, they bring up, it's the same point where he gets sad that he killed someone. He brings up his his doctor's oath, and they're like, mm. and he's like, oh, I swore an oath that I wouldn't mm. kill anyone. They were like, yeah, but well, you did it for selfish reasons, though. <laughs> like, that should be, that's like their reasoning for why it's okay that you killed that person, <laughs> because you did it because you were selfish. Yeah. Well, I mean, the worst one for me was the first Avengers. In the first Avengers... Um, Loki leads like a, a, a team onto the helicarrier of people that he's you mm. know controlling with his staff. Otherwise, innocent people that Loki is mind controlling, and Captain America throws one of them off the helicarrier to like the most <laughs> long, horrible death imaginable. Like this guy's just falling from miles high in the sky, and he's just someone who's had this mind controlled. It, like, but but Hawkeye, they're fine knocking him, knocking his head against something so that he can wake up and figure out who he is. All those other people <laughs> fall to their deaths. And Captain America doesn't give a shit. But Doctor Strange has now killed at least three people. I uh, to be honest, I don't I don't like I'm not keeping score. I don't mind too much with the Marvel films. That yeah. gimmick is really cool. But it kind of just sort of ended mm. really quickly. Like they didn't do it for very long and it they, there was a couple of really cool bits, like there's the bit where they kind of get like yeah. sucked back into an explosion and they're dodging cars. But other than that, it felt like really, really cool idea. Yeah. But I kind of wish that it had more to it. It was more just like something, boom, pitched it. It felt like they just, they had the really cool idea and then they didn't know how to use yeah. it. Yeah. The, the, the initial sequence where he goes through all the different dimensions is cool. That was, I really liked the, yeah, the, that the one. The properly he- head trip one. And uh, some some of like the little individual moments. I kind of like the bit where Mads Mikkelsen kind of extends the corridor so that he's just basically running on yeah. the spot when he's chasing after him. That's cool. But I kind of sort of see what Jack was saying about like how often all this cool stuff's happening to the scenery, and they're like shifting mm. the scenery and scenery in the environments, and then in the center of it is two people going, eh. see, dear, yeah. It was cool. It was the the action was the best part. I do think that the action was the best, and all the general visual effects and everything were the best part. Yeah, I'd say the visual effects. Whenever they weren't part, on like, screen, far. I kind of start getting bored. Uh, I I think I I think I'd actually I might I'd prefer watching it at home just because we saw it on the big three D thing, and while I thought that was probably the best way to first watch it because it is so immersive and all of that, and the effects are so, I think they're great to watch in three D. Actually, it's one of the few films where I liked the three D. I think if I saw it in 2D on a smaller screen, I might be able to catch everything. Because I, I, I did feel like there was a lot of things I, that were going past too quick for me to really take in. The thing is, you could say, like, oh, I, I could rewatch the whole film to get to those scenes. But to be honest, if someone just put up the scenes that I wanted on YouTube, I'd be completely fine just watching yeah. that and then leaving the rest. Yeah. I just wish they did something more different. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I just wish that they did that more Mm. like all the visual stuff was crazy and cool more of that would have been good and equally 
they do a lot of different and cool things with the visual effects sequences, but then in between those sequences, it is the most generic origin story imaginable. It's like whenever it's away from that stuff, it goes back to like so, so stereotypical Marvel. Like you basically said that Rachel McAdams is just Pepper Potts 2.0. Yeah. And then you have like the mentor, then mentor dies. And yeah, yeah. all those kind of exact origin story things that just happen all the time. Villain that is rushed in and doesn't have any impact. In particular, I really didn't like how Do- Domamu... Do- Domamu? Uh, your mama, yeah. Your mama, Your mama. <laughs> um, I didn't like how like this great... Like, it felt very galactic to me. Mm. And like, this is the great universe-destroying thing. And it pops up for two minutes at the end for... a. Skip I thought it was. I thought it was Thanos. Groundhog Day. For half the time. <laughs> but like it, it, the the great big all powerful Dormammu doesn't really do anything except sort of float and then get caught in a trick. <laughs> <laughs> he did less than Thanos in Guardians. He did, he did yeah. But like, he, I'm fine with the idea that the kind that he's not the main villain for this. That Mads Mikkelsen is. And he's just supposed to be behind the scenes. That's fine. I don't. I didn't need him to be in it all the way through. And I didn't need Dormammu to particularly do, like, I have a big protracted action sequence. But he literally does nothing except get caught out in a trick. No, no, no. I don't need it to be a fight. I like the idea that he gets caught in in the trick. I like. Yeah. The, I like the idea that it's this this the the way that he beats him. The problem is that that's the only scene that Dormammu is in. Is the one is the scene where he's beaten. Is his only action in the film is being defeated. <laughs> oh, I was thinking the exact opposite. He's how? What is the point in the other Avengers when they have someone who can literally tra- control time and space next to them? Yeah, like is this like that Mitchell and Webb thing with the bicycle guy and the guy who summons angels? And like <laughs> he's constantly summoning angels. The guy's like, L- <laughs> yeah, and he's like. Can, can I do something? It's like, or I could just get the angels to do it. It would just be like Doctor Strange is just like, or I could rewind time and just yeah. stop it from happening. It would be fine. Ben might know this more so than me or Jack. Do the rest of the what do the rest of the Infinity Stones actually do? Because it felt like that one controls time. It it's time, a very kind of clear space. thing. Space. Uh, uh, so. Which one's space? What's the because the others just seem to be. The others just sort of seem to be generic colours. Oh, there's mind. Yeah. Blow up. All right, I've got it up. Mind, soul, power, space, time, and is reality. The, what's the thing? What's the ether from Thor two? Thor. What's the one from Thor two though? I think that's. What's that one? It's just red mist. R- red. The mist. Red goo. Right. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> I'm. I'm googling it, and I'm still confused. <laughs> the ether is called. It just. It just felt like like that one is cool. I like that one. It's good. This is actually a compliment of Doctor Strange. That's a good Infinity Stone. I understand what it does. I'm like, yeah. that one's cool. I, I, I can't wait to see what Thanos does with that one. But it also had me thinking, what are the others? What do they do? Well, do you know what he does in the comic books with it? He, he just destroys half the universe and no yeah. one can do anything about it. He's literally a god and just sort of like wills half the universe to die. And no one can do anything to stop it. It's a bit like Stranger, because it's all because he's like doing it because he loves death, and death is personified, right? Is that not... Yeah, yeah, he's in love with death. Yeah. D- who is in love with Deadpool in the comics. Oh, death is in love with Deadpool? Yes, and so Thanos hates Deadpool oh, okay. more than anyone. Because death loves Deadpool, but yeah, because death loves Deadpool because Deadpool can't die. So whenever he dies... <laughs> Or kind of almost dies. She comes to see him, and they've kind of like developed a proper relationship. So Thanos hates Deadpool <laughs> more than anyone, and he can't kill him. <laughs> I, I wish that would be in the, infi- out of the Infinity film. Uh, the ether is the Infinity Stone of reality. Right, and what does that mean? Yes. <laughs> well, I, d- I, it means they can change reality. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I had to go. I I would like. I went onto the Infinity Stone wiki page. I couldn't find it. I had to click on the Ether page, and it's like a sentence at the bottom of the page. It just goes like, "By the way, it's all, it's all of reality." Okay, fair enough. I, I'm scrolling through. Right. Okay. Right. Reality Stone. Jesus Christ.
<laughs> it just says that it's... <laughs> Sorry, the definition of it is that it has unlimited capabilities. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> then what's the point in the others? One minute, one minute, no, 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 no. What's the point in the other ones if there's that one? If it has unlimited capabilities, why does it need the time stone and the mind stone and the... But multiple, multiple infinities... <laughs> I would say, yeah, I'd say it was entertaining. I wouldn't, I wasn't offended by it at any point. I thought it was good. It was, it was solid. I, I, I would watch it again, maybe if it was on TV. I'm not mad that I saw it or anything. It was mm. good. I just, I don't know. It, it felt, I think it felt more generic than I was expecting, given the way some people have talked about it. Like some people are talking about it as if it's yeah. like, oh, this is like, nothing like anything else you've ever seen. There's no superhero movie quite like it. And he's like, no, it's it's not. Apart from the fact that it has some acid trips in it, it's fairly conventional. I, I give it a six. A good six? A high six? Yeah. Six? A six. I'd say six. The, th- yeah, the weird yeah. thing is, before I watched it, Naomi wanted to watch The Sorcerer's Apprentice. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities. There really is. There's a bit where they go into a mirror dimension. They have that whole thing where they kind of ex- oh, yeah. they explain science, yeah. magic as kind of an extension of science, which is what the uh, Tilda Swinton did in this to him, to get him to understand. And th- there's so many things I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. So there you go. It's, it's actually a ripoff of a Johnny English and <laughs> Sorcerer's Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> the mashup everyone wanted. <laughs> they should put that on the poster. Is he gone? I don't know. His picture's just I can't frozen. tell. It's like frozen. <laughs> I thought he was just waiting for a response. <laughs> it's just stuck on his face. It's really quite scary. I'm waiting for it to like it's move. Disappeared like for he's me. been staying still this whole time. It's, it's disappeared now for me. Did you want to just quickly chat about trailers then for yeah. like 15 minutes or so? Because I, I, before we talk about the, the trailers that we both watched, okay. I just wanted to talk about one that I just watched Yeah. called uh, The Phones in Front of the Screen, Collateral Beauty. Okay. Have you heard of this film? No. Can I, can I pitch it to you? Go on. I'm excited. Okay, so it's, so it's coming out this boxy. Oh, thank God, there's a description <laughs> in the description. Because otherwise I was going to have to wing it. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is coming out on Boxing Day. When a successful New York advertising executive, Will Smith, experiences a deep personal tragedy and retreats oh, from his life entirely. Oh, I think I have heard of this. Is it the one... Well, keep going, but I think I have heard of this now. It's the really his weird fantasy. Devise a tra- yeah, yeah, devise a drastic plan to force him to confront his grief in surprising and profoundly yes, human I way. I have seen the trailer for this. So in this was it Edward Norton? Uh, who else is his friend? Naomi Harris is his friend. Uh, Michael Pena is also his friend. But then uh, it up comes Helen Mirren, <laughs> who's like God. Yeah. <laughs> like and then uh, oh yeah, was it Kira Knightley represents love, and he has literally has a pen pal experience with love. That's yes, I I did watch the tra- I watched this trailer quite a while ago, and I remember looking through the comments, and everyone was like, "Oh, oh this looks horrible. amazing," and I was thinking, "What, what? did they see the same thing?" It, it really did. Look- there was a film that came out a couple of years ago. I forgot what it was called, uh, but it had Colin Farrell in it. And it was like a weird fantasy, high concept love thing. And I think it had Will Smith in it too. And Will Smith was the devil. And it reminded me of that in that it was like a weird sort of attempt at doing like a fantasy, emotional story. Yeah, but I just don't get how people like. I think it was set at Christmas. Enjoy that. Um, this one's set at Christmas. Well, yeah. it's coming out on Boxing Day. I don't know. I assume that means it's a Christmas film. But yeah. No, it did look... I remember it looked pretty awful. What were you going to say about it, though? Because I, I, it's only a distant memory for me. I just thought it, it was the dumbest... <laughs> it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Because it just, it just... It was just full of shots of the actors looking emotional. <laughs> but you didn't know what emotions they were. They were just staring ahead with glossy eyes. And they said, like... Um, 
And the the thing that got me was that, like, so it starts off with this man has experienced a lot of pain, and then it just cuts to the other actors saying, like, he's a he's smart, he's intelligent, he is funny, he is the perfect <laughs> character. You want to be this man, and he's sad. Oh. You have lost a child, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Do you want to experience love again? Yes, please. <laughs> It just it was it was such trite, and I don't know who, like, who wants to see a film like that. I, I don't I'm know. sure there'll be some people. Yeah. Wonder Woman was the one we both just watched. Yes. What did you think? I quite liked it. I had low expectations I... though, so who knows? Maybe it just surprised me. I think it's because it opened with a shot that was colourful, and I genuinely went, "Whoa." Colours. Wait, which which shot? Wait, that was like one of the Louvre. Which one? You, the, no, maybe it didn't open it. The one that was like a shot with the the sea, and it was like a proper blue sea, and she was stood on top of a cliff. Oh yes, yeah, so it's not like the very first no, shot, but it's but, like. But I was very, like, whoa! The beginning colours. Yeah, the colours <laughs> <is> nice. <laughs> and yeah. then like, it's like it's sedated colour, but it's still colour nonetheless. Yeah. And it, it genuinely took me off guard. <laughs> as stupid yeah. as that was, I was I was taken aback by. <laughs> <laughs> by bright colours. colours. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, a distracted it's... toddler just went, Ooh, blue! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I liked I liked bits of it, but I, th- I thought the VFX were cheesy mm. for a lot of it. But, but like, I, not great. I'd, I'd rather uh, have, at this point with the DC films, I think I'd rather have cheesy than depressing, the depressing battles yeah, of yeah. Captain Hypocrite there was nothing and Murder in it. Man. There was, no, there was no, like, massive red flags for me. Yeah. Currently, like, um, yeah, yeah, nothing like that made me go, oh, mm. but, um, except for possibly the joke at the end, yes, but yes, where I was like, yeah, okay, now, now we know that there's a comedy sidekick that appears in literally no other scene of this film <laughs> except for just to make English comments, <laughs> but uh, I mean, like, I liked that it, it looked like it was fun but it didn't look like it was fun in that kind of suicide squad way of like overcompensating for the last few it just looked like it was a natural fun like it was a film that was made not by test screenings or in response to the failures of other films it was just a a a kind of nice mid-ground tone of fun but not look at us we're like the new guardians fun yeah it was a yeah exactly solid entertaining looking tone uh just looked like an adventure romp Yes, (laughs) Yes, yes. <laughs> Although I feel like, from the very intro, I feel like they're setting it up for almost like a Titanic sad feel at the end. Well, you know to I be mean? fair, the, uh, the first Avenger does that too. That's true, that is true. I feel like they, they, they've done something good by stealing that card almost. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if it's too similar, I don't think people are going to like that. Yeah. But... But, but Jack, I have a question for you. What will win out when it comes to the outrage? Would it be, oh, DC are stealing Marvel's things? Or would the, oh, there's a strong woman in this film, override that? Where, where, where would the <laughs> outrage go? They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know what to do. They, didn't, they wouldn't know if they should be... Like, would they criticise something like this? Or, or would they have to treat it as something perfect? I wouldn't be surprised if this gets, like you know, like a high 90 on Rotten Tomatoes with people saying it's great, even if it's just good, because it's like the Ghostbusters thing where, like, Ghostbusters was getting, like, 70% on Rotten Tomatoes with a lot of critics going, it's really great, and it it really wasn't. It really wasn't. Uh, I feel like it could go either way Mm. in that if they do, like, one scene where it slips up, Mm. people would be, like, it. uh, up comes the features where it's, like, Wonder Woman was a disservice or something (laughs) like that. Um, which I feel like it could, it, it's it's on a tightrope, but mm. I mean I feel like it could go either way, and I don't know I, I'd say so far I'm I'm not excited to go see it. I'm not uh, rushing out the door to go see it. Mm. But I mean, if the reviews came out and they were decent, I'd 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 yeah. be fine to watch it. Like it's not like I didn't go see Batman v Superman in the in the cinema or Suicide Squad either. Mm. So it's not like. I've got a bias or anything like that. Yeah. It's just I'm not that bothered about it. This got me more interested. Like I, I watched mm. this and went, "Oh, it might be good." And the thing, but the, at the same time, I remember thinking, 
That's exactly the same reaction I had to the first Batman v Superman trailer. It's exactly the same reaction I had to the Man of Steel trailers. And as for the Suicide yeah. Squad trailers, I genuinely thought, this is going to be awesome. So DC have a track record of pretty good trailers. Yeah, and I think a lot of it was that that score, that her motif. Yeah. Wonder Woman's motif is really gets you excited. Yeah, it does. Like regardless cool. of if if they play that theme several like several times in the film, that would just be enough fun to carry whatever scene that's in. Yeah. Like, I think. It's just a really good like and I think it's just the reason why it stood out so much is that I think people really like it as well, is because the Marvel characters don't have massively distinct themes unless you're hearing out for them. Yeah. And the fact that when typical cinema goers can hear that song and think Wonder Woman. Yeah. Like that's quite good. That's quite yeah. exciting for well, them. Like I, I I can distinguish the Marvel themes, but at the same time I'm aware that they're all orchestra or very kind of normal uh symphonic compositions. Whereas like there's not one that has like a, a distinct instrument or something that I associate with them. Whereas like that guitar riff is yeah, just Wonder Woman and only Wonder Woman. It's not like yeah. I mean, you could so easily. That's the annoying thing. Like, Ant Man could have like a triangle or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, 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 you joke about it, but a tri- a triangle, ti- a tie angle. <laughs> I don't know why I developed like a lisp or whatever. Um, a triangle because he yeah, it's because he's tiny. <laughs> I mean, that would work. <laughs> I, I, if he had a fun theme to him, I would like him more genuinely, yeah. and I'm not just saying that because it's the argument that we're having at the moment. <laughs> like I genuinely would like that. Um, yeah, and I think it's kind of like well, they they always do it in the other superhero films when the character has a distinctive one, like Spider Man. They always try to find a way to work the Spider Man theme in somewhere mm. because people hear it and they recognize it, and they really like recognizing music established to characters. Yeah. And you can hear like the background stuff. Like I think the closest to it in Marvel is the Avengers theme. I would say Captain America has that one. Recognize it's quite distinct as well. The the kind of like trumpety patriotic thing that plays. True, yeah, but I feel like the Avengers it yeah. stood out a bit more just because it people was the like one. The film. It was the one that plays over the title, so people yeah. don't have anything else to watch, and it's that building together of lots of different characters. Yeah. As opposed to like, so it just basically represents the entire franchise instead of just one character. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, were there any other trailers that you watched did, recently? Did you watch I, the train spotting one? Yeah, I did. What did you think? Yeah, I haven't. I I haven't watched Train Spotting, the first one. Yeah. Do you do you not think it's do you not like it that much? It's or? it's all right. It's 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 just not my kind of. Thing, which I know it might sound like it is ostensibly because it's kind of a slightly dark comedy, but I, it's very. I'm trying to think of the word. It's very British in a way that I just don't identify with as much. Like, I can see why I someone like James it, would like it. I know, I, I get what you mean. Is that I feel like I'm disconnected from it. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's just. It's not my kind of. Thing the whole kind of like, I just don't know why it's gotten so much mass appeal. To it, it. It's like it's not that I. I it's just uh, it's very very British in a way that I I almost find a little like oh, like you know like when a film's very very American and everyone kind yeah. of like laughs at it and it's accepted that you can laugh at a film for being incredibly overtly American. I feel mm. like the same could be true for British films. And it's it's just it feels like a like a tick list of kind of gritty British drama film about people who are like scummy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was I was trying my best to kind of dance around it, and I was like, yeah, nah, just scummy British film. It's one of those. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just not something that really excites me to go watch it. I mm. think I'll watch it again before I what no, I I think I'll watch it mm. before this film comes out. Just because it I mean, there's no point going into the sequel having no knowledge of the that characters. That is true. But um, what did you think of the trailer? The trailer seemed fun. Seemed fun. I mean, I they, I feel like there were lots of references in it that I just mm. didn't get. Like there was the 
taught meeting old flings, meeting new friends or whatever, and I was mm. like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. <laughs> but still, I didn't I mean, like. I, a lot of people have been quoting this as if it's brilliant, but I didn't like the whole like choose Facebook, choose social networks. Yeah. We're modern now. This I is know. The... I know that. Yeah, I know the quote from the original yeah. film. It just felt like. Like it was leading up to an advert, or something like that. Well, I mean, it was an out. Uh, the whole thing was an advert, but you know what? Like, mm. like when they, like a couple of years ago, where they did a Ferris Bueller's Day Off remake for like five minutes, yeah. where, and it was just to sell a car. Yeah, like it felt it. It felt a bit like that. It felt like a very kind of like like if I was the scriptwriter for something like Train Spotting, I was like, what's a contemporary reference I can make to sound edgy? What's a exactly. what's a what's a like yeah. a big kind of mass. Thing that I can make fun of the average person for liking social media now work contemporary and, one, and, and one this person, film has a reason yeah. to exist and one person goes like oh yeah I am addicted to Facebook <laughs> oh, this film taught me it's so clever <laughs> it'd be like, like it'd be like one... if they did the Fight Club sequel now it, it, is, and it just Durden feels like was UK just, Fight Club and like Tyler Durden's just like you're not your tweets <laughs> you're, not, you're not your subscribe account on YouTube <laughs> It's just Ed, it's just Edward Norton trying to get off Snapchat. That's the whole <laughs> film. But actually, he's created another account that he thinks is someone else. But at the end, he realizes that he's <laughs> actually that account too, and he's been liking all of his own <laughs> things on Facebook. And, and then there's like a, there's like a five minute like. <laughs> Uh, side story where it's just Tyler Durden says like how he like sends dick pics that only last one second on the screen so it's like subconscious <laughs> you could have like you know there's that bit in the first fight club where he kind of has all the Ikea furniture and all the kind of descriptions yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. you just have emojis coming up on the screen and, oh, and no. memes <laughs> <laughs> memes choose memes <laughs> But yeah, I, I just I, I I'm really starting to get fed up with any film acknowledging social media to be like yeah, I want no. them to just pretend it doesn't exist. It just for some reason, even though it is like a part of every everyday yeah. life, whenever someone mentions it in a film, it feels forced to me. It does. Like, I know it what you feel mean. Real. I know. <laughs> but like people do, people do talk about like, social media uh-huh. in average conversations. But at the same time. If they do it in a film, uh, it does feel like an attempt to be relevant in a way that I find kind of cringeworthy. Are you dead? Right, okay, well... Oh, he's dead. Har- Harrison's cut out. I'm on, I'm on my own here. Great. We've been um, Real Opinions. Uh, you can catch us both on Twitter. Uh, you can catch the official Real Opinions on Twitter as well. Facebook, YouTube... Everywhere else, you can subscribe to this on iTunes and I think Stitcher. I set that up once and I haven't looked at it again. Yeah, thanks for listening, if you got this far. And, bye!